Hello, I hope you're all staying safe and you're not too stir crazy right now if you are in self-isolation or quarantine because of coronavirus. I've been in self-isolation for two weeks and while a lot of my events have been cancelled, which I'm very sad about, I am getting a lot of writing done so I'm trying to look on the bright side and not get too frustrated. I'm getting out every day a lot because of this one uh, on walks so it's not really affecting my day to day life too much uh, but my heart goes out to anyone who's really worried and struggling right now. So I wanted to talk a bit today about an unauthorised fan tree ties which if you've not heard of is an online novel I've been releasing since October. It is a murder mystery novel told through bloggers' posts uh, documenting research she is doing into uh, about the two actors on her favourite TV show, Lock and Ness. She's a massive fangirl and she's absolutely convinced that the two main actors are secretly dating. She starts investigating their lives in a very intensive, invasive, obsessive way, similar to the baby gate style of investigations that fangirls did about Harry Styles and Louis Tomlinson. And uh, as her investigations go on, she gets sucked deeper and deeper into this web of conspiracy theories that involve the dark web and forgeries and murder and all sorts of terrible things that she becomes complicit in. And as the story goes on, it becomes very clear that she's not going to escape from this unscathed. The new chapter is released every Monday. We're currently on chapter 25. There's another five chapters left. So if you haven't started reading it yet, now is the perfect time to get drawn in, especially if you're stuck inside at the minute. And you, you can then follow along as it builds up to the final finish. Gotti, the fangirl who is writing these blog posts, uh, is a bit crazy and she's a very immoral. She's not the nicest of persons, but she's very clever. She's a, a budding journalist who is very good at research. And it was very important to me to create this complex, flawed, but intelligent female character because I often see a lot of fangirls getting dismissed as vapid teenage girls who have just got a crush on a boy. And that's not what I see in fandom. I spend a lot of time on Tumblr. I see the amount of work that goes into researching their favourite celebrities. And it is almost at the level of a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist research. So I really wanted to document that in a way that showed the flawed and not necessarily great morally side of being a fangirl, but also showed just how clever these girls are. So I have some questions um, about the story that I was going to answer. The first one is from Baz Will End in Flames, who says, Did you start an unauthorised fan treatise with the actual murder and plot in mind or with characters like Gotti and Rob? So Gotti was immediately the first character that came to mind. I really wanted to write about a fangirl and about fandom and I wanted and that was always the basis for me of writing about a flawed female character. But from that, I knew that if it was going to work as a novel, there needed to be some greater plot beyond that. I started by thinking uh, it would be about a girl who comes into a fandom that her mum used to be in. So if you think of a fandom like Star Trek that's been going on since the 60s, you can have whole generations of families where everyone has been a fan of that show. And I thought it would be really interesting to have a grandmother and a mum and a granddaughter who all are fans of a show like Star Trek but in very different ways and they interact with that very differently from zines to kind of live journal slash fic to obsessive actor stalking on Tumblr. Uh, they're all the same source material but they come at it from very different perspectives. I got really into true crime murder mysteries like the serial podcast and I had to combine my idea for this fandom story with something like that because I couldn't resist having a murder. So the characters of Rob and Nathan, the two actors who she is fixated on, uh, developed because I wanted some kind of... Uh, I wanted to create that feeling of a murder that the more you investigate, the more it's revealed and you uncover this web and it just gets so tangled and everything is connected but you don't know how. and. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I would love to do something like this again because it really challenged me as a writer. Um, I, From writing the first draft to then being able to edit it took so long because I just kept coming back to it and it just completely stumped me on how to edit something that was so complicated with so many timelines and ha having 
the things that Gotti knows be different to the things that Gotti is telling the reader because she's a very unreliable narrator and then be the things that Gotti is discovering may herself and thinks are true may not necessarily be true because she's getting them from sources that are intentionally lying to her with a lot of comments being left to her from people who are involved in this and might not necessarily have very honourable motives and they're feeding her false information. So there's a lot of layers that I needed to have going on before the, the real plot is unveiled. And so I kept coming back to it and trying to work out how to edit it and how to get this plot to work for a year. And each time I'd be a little better at editing because I'd worked on a few different projects in the meantime and I'd got some new skills and I'd read lots of new books and had new ideas about editing from those and how to plot things from those. And finally I managed to work out how to make it work. Uh, but like I said, it took a whole year. <laughs> Jam underscore MP3 asks, are Rob and Nathan actually dating? I am not going to answer that. Uh, I really wanted it to remain a mystery right until the end whether they're actually dating because that's not the point and the fact that the reader is curious already shows how realistic it is that Gotti would be obsessed with this idea of whether they're dating or not and I wanted to leave it with leave readers with that curiosity about that because that's the whole point it's supposed to be a reflection of real life. Jam MP3 also asks has Gotti ever written Rob Nathan fic or Loch and Ness fic? Rob Nathan, she's written a lot about within the blog. So she, one of the chapters is basically her RPF real person fic about them and what she thinks their relationship progression was like. And it goes into a lot of detail. I think it's one of the longest chapters in the whole novel. Um, so there's a lot of her fic about them in there. And then has she written any Loch and Ness fic? I'm not going to answer that yet. <laughs> You'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Jam MP3 also asks, why did you choose this specific format? So I've always written books that have like multimedia elements right back from the next together. It's, I was including notes on the fridge and tweets and Facebook posts and text conversations. It's always been a very natural way to write for me because that's how I experience the world through my phone and through communicating with my friends via the internet. And so I don't feel like I know a character until I see how they behave online because often your online personality is very different to who you are in reality. Well, they're both real, but you know what I mean? Like your online persona, it shows a different facet of your personality compared to how you behave in real life. So uh, it was always an obvious thing for me. If I'm gonna write a book about the internet and about the weird things that go on on the internet, I need to do it through internet posts and a big part of that is why I ended up posting it online rather than releasing it as a novel. I made that decision, it wasn't something that my publisher said I should do, I approached them and said I've written this novel and I want to put it on the internet before releasing it as a f published fiction novel book because it is written in internet posts and tweets and that is the format I think it needs to be in because I wanted to have hyperlinks and footnotes you could click on and then go back and embedded tweets that would lead to whole Twitter accounts and live journal posts that you could click on and then see a whole blog and follow the people that that blog follows and see their blogs. I wanted it to feel like a real world in a way that I didn't think I could do if it was a published paperback book and hopefully we'll be able to do it in that format eventually. We might have to change it up a bit to get it to work but I really wanted to see if it was possible to write a novel on, inter on the internet first and I'm very glad that it is working so far. <laughs> Out of all of your characters who would get on best with the characters in an, or an unauthorised fan treatise? Now I'm doing this video I'm starting to realise how hard that is to say, sorry about that. Um, I think that Gotti would really get on well with Romy. For a start, they're massive Loch and Ness fans. So Loch and Ness is the TV show that Gotti is obsessed with that Rob and Nathan act in. And I took that from the book The Loneliest Girl in the Universe because in that book I have my character Romy living on a spaceship just spending her time watching TV and writing fan fiction. And I invented this paranormal TV show about detectives Lyra Locke and Jaden Ness who investigate crimes with vampires and witches and werewolves. And then when I came on to write uh, an unauthorised fan treatise, I needed a fandom and it was very easy to go, okay, I'll take the one that I've already written and invented characters for and I've got a bit of a backstory for and I'll use that one. 
Gotti and Romy would have a lot to talk about. Romy is a big Lyra Jaden shipper and Gotti is very staunchly on the Fang Jaden side. So they might not like each other at first, but I think once Gotti started telling Romy her theories about Rob and Nathan, then they might get on a bit. So just because I'm sure some people are already like, but how does the timeline work for that? So Gotti is living in 2018 and Romy is a few decades in the future in the 2030s. And so Gotti's version of Lock and Ness is the original and it gets rebooted and Romy is watching the reboot. So it's not actually got Rob and Nathan in. Um, so if, if you're confused about timelines, there's the answer for that. So just, just Queer Trash asks, was the entire thing already written before you posted the first chapter or have you been working on it still? So I wrote the first draft in July 2018. I then spent a year trying to work out how to edit it. And, and then in July, August 2019, I finished editing it, sent it off to my agent and editor and got their approval to start posting it online. And I had the first few chapters ready to go because I'd been had it on the website using it as a proposal so they could see the format I was intending to use. So it was all formatted. The HTML formatting, by the way, takes so much time because of all the, the footnotes and hyperlinks and making accounts and stuff. It was way more work than I thought it would be, but that was obviously why I wanted to do it. So I had the about, I'd say the first 10 chapters were completely done, ready to start posting as soon as the first chapter went live. After that, I had um, bits of feedback that I'd come up with and that my agent and editor had suggested that I still needed to work on towards the end so I was as it was being posted I was working on little bits here and there of the ending and then as it started getting feedback from you all online I was going in and adding more stuff people were commenting on certain things that I hadn't thought of or I had remembered that I'd started to seed into the plot and then not addressed at the end so I had to go back and add in more context and give a bit more documentation and people were talking to the characters on the Twitter and Tumblr accounts. So I obviously was responding to them and adding a bit more detail. So it's kind of been ongoing as people have noticed the few plot holes that did end up in there. I have been going back and editing it so that then nobody notices and it's all complete as it goes along. A few people have also tweeted me about like chronological things where I just changed the dates and not not consistently updated them uh, so I had to go back and fix things but the main story was there I haven't been writing it week to week that would be impossible as you can probably tell now it's getting near the end there's so many interwoven timelines and it is it is a nightmare to plot I had an excel spreadsheet of different storylines of like what they know what they know what they know what you know <laughs> uh, I had I wrote it all out on bits of paper and shuffled them around I had like a word document full of comments and track changes of noting what was going on down the side so Prince Drew Wright asks how long has it taken you to put everything all together it's so well put together and intricate thank you very much um like I said ages um, one of the hardest things that I hadn't anticipated being so hard was the formatting. Um, the footnotes especially, they kept breaking. It, it was a nightmare getting them to work. Um, also, there are so many hyperlinks where Gotti has linked to stuff on the internet, like this post about them on the Daily Mail or this paparazzi upload of all the pictures that they took in a, on a coffee shop walk and finding new links to use for those took a while because uh, obviously I couldn't make them from scratch but I wanted it to feel like there was a world that existed beyond what I had made. Anne Reads Books asks, what has been the most challenging thing about writing a novel in this format? What did the editing process look like? The most challenging part has definitely been giving the readers enough information that they can guess the plot twists and work out what's going on without uh, overwhelming them with red herrings and information that uh, is misleading. Uh, I didn't want it to feel too chaotic. I wanted it to feel that it had to be the right balance between realism and leading you in the right direction plot wise. Uh, because I think that if you have plot twists, you need to be able to, you need to give your readers enough information that they could work out the plot twist. Otherwise, it's just random. I get really annoyed when I watch TV shows. Uh, it doesn't usually happen in books, mainly TV shows, where they do a plot twist 
and it's not earned like they haven't seeded in that information in the episodes beforehand it just comes out of nowhere um because that's not good writing you need your ca your readers need to be there alongside you and they need to feel like you, this has been built into the world from the very beginning so doing that here when it was such a different format you can't really have so usually when i'm writing a plot twist i would have my I'd be in the character's head in the prose and I could drop in little bits of information that the reader doesn't really notice because you're in their head, you're thinking all their thoughts. It's just uh, it's just colourful detail. It, because the format is Gotti talking to readers on a blog, you can't really have throwaway information in the same way. So I ended up having to come up with new ways to give the reader information, like having comments from anonymous readers of the blog just saying random stuff that then Gotti responds to and then it leads on to discussions about stuff. Uh, yeah, so that was quite difficult. And uh, the editing, again, was very difficult. The, the editing was actually really quick because the writing style is like an essay. So a lot of the stuff I've got, I can reuse when I change scenes around. So I only would have to add in new paragraphs at the start and then I could reuse whole chapters if I decided that it didn't work with the old storyline or whatever. So editing it was probably, once I had decided what I needed to change, changing it would only take a couple of days. But it was a hard part was deciding on which bits to change and how. It's getting dark, so I'll go and turn some lights on. Lydia Bell asks, how difficult was it to plan out all the little details of the plot, like the whole laptop thing, considering the format the story is told in? Is it easier than doing a novel or was it more difficult? The hard part of writing something like this is having a twist that does not feel over the top. I obviously want it to feel like insane, like the things Gotti is doing are insane, but it is based in realism. I'm not writing a lovely, fantastical adventure like I was in The Starlight Watchmaker with Hugo and Dorian. I'm writing about w real people on the internet and not only does the reader have to believe this is happening, but all of Gotti's readers and viewers have to believe that this is real as well. Because if one of if they all start thinking that it's made up, then they're going to stop tuning in and seeing her posts. So it has to toe the line between obnoxious and crazy and realistic in a way that you're like, yeah, a fun girl would do that. So that was really hard with stuff like the laptop storyline where Gotti and Rob kind of swapped laptops for a bit they stole each other's laptops and um there was a bit there where I was like there's no way is anyone going to believe this and I had to put that in the story of all of the commenters on Gotti's post were like you didn't do this this is a lie and it was only when evidence they couldn't dismiss appeared that they had to believe it had actually happened so that was really tough uh, and a lot harder than a novel where I think I would have been able to convince readers that this stuff was actually going on so once you'd established that she was unreliable as a narrator everything she does comes into question and if there's something i want the reader to believe like for sure <laughs> i have to make sure there is evidence to prove that it is t to be believed um otherwise it's just it's gonna get worse and worse and nothing is gonna make sense so that was pretty tough why michael him says how did you get the idea to compose a story in such an interactive way? I'm thinking of all the hyperlinks you include, the comments and the way it's published real time. I've never seen anything like it before. Like I said, one of the big inspirations was Serial Podcast. So if you haven't listened to that, I highly recommend it, even if you weren't there when it was being uploaded real time. But what happened with that is a journalist did a lot of months of investigation into a real life murder case. Uh, the the murderer was in prison and she was interviewing him but also doing her own research like reenacting how long it would take to drive from locations triangulating the cell phone data that kind of stuff and so the first few episodes she's recounting the information that she found out during this research but then listeners of the podcast start commenting in and writing into her with new evidence and she has to start investigating as the podcast is being uploaded and things come to life that she hadn't worked out in months of research. The audience was progressing the story, they were engaged with it and causing it to keep developing and I was desperate to write something like that. I wanted something where the fact that it was being um, 
publicised and uh, serialised was absolutely crucial to the progression of the plot and if it had been just some girl doing this on her own on her room it would never have got to the point it did she needed viewers and readers for this to happen and so because someone like a fangirl where they are obsessing over a celebrity they don't exist in a vacuum they are doing that because they have feedback from equally obsessed readers who are encouraging them egging them on providing them with resources they do it collectively as a group the things being done by fangirls online are very invasive and stalking and the fact that they have an audience is what makes that happen so i wanted to write about uh, an interactive story that portrays that and shows that nothing could be going on without that audience so those are all the questions that i got sent about uh, gotti rights and and unauthorized fan ties like i said it's still uploading the uh, answers to these plot twists have not yet been revealed so if you haven't got started yet go to gottywrites.wordpress.com to check it out the more support this gets and the more that you share it if you're enjoying reading it and encourage other people to read it the more likely it is that this will one day be a finished published paperback book and I cannot wait to have it on my shelves alongside my other more traditional novels I think it's one of the best things I've written and it deserves that space so go and check it out. If you have more questions for me, I'll probably film another video in the aftermath once it's all over. So we can actually discuss it in a spoilery video where I can answer all your questions about what's really going on. So if you have questions, you can send them to laurenjames.tumblr.com forward slash ask. You can send them anonymously. And if you put for a YouTube video, uh, then I won't answer them. I will save them up for my next video. So thank you from me and Ollie who has been doing a very good job of snoozing away in the background there. Bye! <laughs>